Good afternoon. Cardiology, the branch of medicine dedicated to the study of the heart, isn't just about keeping the heart beating. It's about understanding the intricate dance of life that happens with every heartbeat. Today, we're gonna to explore how technology is transforming our ability to understand and care for the heart. Heart disease is the number one killer, not, all, not just only in the US, worldwide. Think about this. Every 33 seconds, someone loses their life to cardiovascular disease. In 2022, that was over 700,000 people, only in the US one out of every five deaths. But here's the good news. Technology is actually changing this reality. We're no longer just bystanders, we're actually fighting back. As we dive deeper into cardiology, we find common heart conditions that affect millions of people, such as coronary artery disease, heart failure, arrhythmias, and valvular heart disease. Each condition has its own causes, symptoms, and complications that could affect people's lives. While each condition has its own complications, technology has actually helped us significantly to understand and being able to diagnose and treat these conditions. There are factors that we can control, like quitting smoking, improving our diets, and actually staying active, and others we can't, like our genetics. But education is powerful, and by empowering people to make smart and better lifestyle choices, we can actually tackle heart disease before it strikes. Take coronary artery disease, for example. It's caused by plaque buildup that narrows the arteries, reducing blood flow to the heart. This can lead to chest pain that we call angina, heart attacks, and potentially serious damage to the heart muscle. But thanks to advanced technologies, we're able to tackle these conditions and use procedures to prevent heart disease and heart damage before it happens. Heart failure is another challenge. When the heart fails to pump effectively, people feel tired, they have shortness of breath, and they retain fluids. But today we have devices and therapies that give patients a new hope by improving both their heart function and their quality of life. Arrhythmias or irregular heart rhythms are disruptions in the electrical signals of the heart. They can be life-threatening, they can impact heart function, and they can increase the risk of stroke. Common types that you might have heard of are atrial fibrillation or AFib, SVT or supraventricular tachycardia, and ventricular tachycardia. But today, thanks to modern technologies, we have catheter-based treatments and advanced therapies that actually can help us restore normal rhythm and reduce these risks significantly. The study of the heart dates back to ancient times, but it wasn't until the 20th century when cardiology began to evolve into a distinct medical field. This was the first successful open heart surgery performed in 1952. This was a milestone. This marked the beginning of modern cardiac procedures. Over the decades, with the development of cornea angiography in the 1960s and the introduction of balloon angioplasty in the 1970s, cardiology saw significant advancements. These early innovations laid the foundation for the cutting edge techniques that we use today. The tools that we use today in cardiology are nothing short of revolutionary. You can see some of them here on the slide, electrocardiogram on the right bottom, echocardiogram and stress test on the left side, heart catheterizations or cornea angiography on the top right. These have significantly transformed the way we assess and diagnose heart disease. These technologies provide critical insights that help us personalize treatments of various heart conditions. Cardiology is witnessing a technological transformation like never before. Wearable devices, telemedicine, artificial intelligence are at the forefront of this revolution. Let me show you how things have changed over time. Wearable devices like smartwatches allow for real-time monitoring of heart rhythms detecting irregularities like atrial fibrillation before they can lead to significant complications like stroke. This empowers patients to take control of their heart health. Telemedicine has allowed us to reach patients in remote areas, providing care and monitoring from a distance. This is particularly transformative in the management of chronic conditions like heart disease, 
where continuous monitoring can lead to better outcomes. Artificial intelligence is another big breakthrough. It actually has transformed diagnostics and treatment planning. Machine learning algorithms that analyze vast amounts of data, identifying patterns and predicting outcomes with a level of accuracy that was unheard of a few years ago, significantly changed how we deal with heart disease. These enable us to personalize treatments and treatment planning. These technologies have significantly reduced the risk associated with heart procedures and have made previously high-risk operations routine. A lot of these procedures now that we used to do high-risk operations, now we can actually treat many heart-related symptoms and many heart conditions with small incisions and catheter-based techniques. Which brings us to my specialty, interventional cardiology, which focuses on minimally invasive techniques to restore blood flow and alleviate many heart-related symptoms. Techniques like angioplasty, stent placement, catheter-based treatments have significantly changed our way of approaching heart disease, making procedures safer, quicker, and more effective. Here's something unexpected, and this is my 10-year-old son's favorite part. All the years that I've spent as a young kid playing video games actually helped me develop the skills that I use daily now in the cath lab. So precision, hand-eye coordination, quick decision-making that are important for video games are actually crucial in interventional cardiology. In the operating room, these skills are extremely important. They make a difference where every second and every movement counts. What you see here in this, in this picture is a robotic PCI system where the operator is able to work on the small, tiny blood vessels in the heart even while sitting in a different room. This is not science fiction. This is actually the future of cardiology. This allows us to minimize radiation exposure and be extremely precise in doing heart procedures. Let me tell you a story. So this is a 57-year-old gentleman who presented to our hospital here in Southlake complaining of severe chest pain. He had history of elevated blood pressure and diabetes, which both are risk factors for heart disease. In the hospital, tests revealed that he was having a heart attack. And an ultrasound of his heart showed that his heart function was actually reduced. Thanks to the advanced technology that we have in interventional cardiology, I was able to use a microcatheter and reach this small blood vessel that you see in the slide and you remove the small blood clots that you see in the middle, improving his heart function, resolving his symptoms, and basically saving his life. Here's another story. This is a businessman who felt short of breath after returning from a business trip. By the time he reached our hospital, he was struggling to breathe, and his heart rate and blood pressure spiked. In the hospital, we diagnosed him with pulmonary embolism, which is a dangerous blood clot in his lungs. Thanks to a new sophisticated device that we didn't have like five years ago, I was able to go into his lungs, into the vessels of his lungs, and remove a huge blood clot that you see on the right side. The moment we removed the blockage, he felt immediate relief, and he was able to breathe again. This rapid recovery illustrates how technology can make a life or death difference in critical situations. Finally, this is a story of a 79-year-old gentleman who came to my clinic complaining of worsening shortness of breath, even with minimal exertion. He was just walking, going up one flight of stairs, and he was unable to breathe. Thorough evaluation in the office showed that he was having something called severe aortic valve stenosis, which is a condition that involves the valve that takes out the blood from the heart to the rest of the body, where it becomes narrowed and obstruct blood flow. Previously, this patient would have needed an open heart surgery. It's a big surgery, carries significant risk, especially for someone at his age. But these days, we're able to actually treat him with minimally invasive approach, with no need for surgery, and no need for cutting. And he can go home the following day. So this procedure involves, as you see in the video, a catheter. We thread that through the femoral artery, through a small needle stick, and we put the device through the catheter on the wire. 
Since the, the hole is very small and the valve is, is, is bulky, we have to actually assemble our device inside the body, inside the aorta. So you see that the device is inside the aorta, it's the big vessel of the, of, the, of the body. So we assemble the device inside the body and we put it on top of a balloon so we can actually inflate it. So this is the balloon and the, the, the valve, which is mounted on a stent on the balloon, going with the whole system over the wire, inside of the aorta, to the heart. Of course, we do this in the cath lab, under x-ray, and with ultrasound assistance. So this is the valve. We kind of maneuver the device, maneuver the groove, so we can actually go inside the old valve, inside the damaged valve, which is calcified, hardened, thickened, doesn't open well. So we're now inside the valve. We position it well to make sure that we're actually in the right place. And we use a temporary pacemaker. We pace the heart fast so we can actually stop the heart for like five seconds so we can actually place the valve. And this is where the heart stops. We inflate the balloon. The valve is in place. We deflate the balloon. That took less than five seconds. Take the balloon out. Take the catheter out. Of course, we remove it through the same hole that we put it in. There's no cutting. There's no another access for it. This is the only access. The wire is out, and now the patient has a new valve. And you can see the valve is opening and closing normally, like a normal valve. The whole procedure usually takes less than half an hour. We actually monitor patients to just to be careful for overnight and go home the following day. So this patient now uh, enjoys a much improved quality of life with renewed energy and he's back to his daily activities. Symptoms completely resolved. I'll leave you with this picture of my wife, Sosan, and myself. Last month when we were on a medical mission to Northwest Syria, so we worked with patients who were, extreme, who were facing extreme challenges. The contrast between all these technologies we talked about here, the artificial intelligence, the robotic PCI system, and the lack of even the basic medical supplies in conflict zones around the world is staggering. Here, we're able to save lives in real time using cutting-edge techniques or technologies. Over there, people actually struggle to even have access to the basic healthcare services. So this should, should serve as a reminder that of our responsibility to help those in need. This motivates me whenever I go there and hope it motivates all of you to find ways to bridge these gaps and improve the human experience wherever it is. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anas Alamar.